Yep, 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 yep. Hello and welcome everyone to the GGG Podcast, our special Summer Games Fest edition episode. I am very excited to get this show going today. As always, I am joined by Phil. Phil, are you are you ready to talk some summer games? We've got a lot of announcements to go through. Oh yeah, buddy. I am so ready to talk about Summer Games Fest and um, the parts of it that were or were not interesting. <laughs> Well, there's always there's always going to be stuff that's not interesting, and that's how you know what is interesting, right? That's it, that's true. Like the standout. Sony conference. Sorry, <laughs> I'm, so, <laughs> I'm going to come out of the gate swinging. No, that's fine. the The <laughs> state of, state of play prior to this was rather disappointing. So mm-hmm. uh, definitely definitely a big win uh, this week uh, from Xbox. I th- also thought Ubisoft had a pretty good showing as well. Um, so yeah, but lots of lots of great announcements and lots of games that are actually coming out this year, not things that we have to wait a crazy uh, long time for. So mm-hmm. very, very exciting. But before we get into that, uh, if you enjoy our podcast uh, at... Uh, Golden Glaze Gaming, please give us a follow over on YouTube or if you listen to the audio-only version on Spotify or Apple Podcast, uh, we would love a subscriber or follow on those as well. So before we dig into all the announcements, Phil, have you gotten up to any any gaming this week uh, that you want to you wanna share or talk oh. about? Oh, absolutely. So I just, uh, earlier today, I played a bit in the new season of Fortnite, which seems to be all Mad Max focused. So that was pretty cool uh right for the on. first time being in a car feels like valuable uh <laughs> and i've been playing a lot of multiverses uh which mm. is kind of a unique thing uh it it's you know it goes back and forth it's a very it's a very <laughs> uh tense love affair i uh, i've been playing it too you don't have to feel ashamed of yourself it's okay oh but, okay good okay. Hope, yeah. <laughs> we gotta talk about this because it's uh i'm surprised that i'm enjoying it as much as i am mm. uh but I feel like the uh, I'm going to want to talk about it next week, so I'm just getting ahead of it. But I'm so excited for the new Helldivers uh, update, Mm -hmm. the new Warbond. Yes. Pretty much Predator. Yeah. Yeah, As well as a bunch of game fixes. Uh, Yeah. They they talked about how they're going to be reverting back a lot of the, uh, the difficulty setting spikes. So, like, the increased patrols and stuff like that, they're going to be mm-hmm. going back to how it was originally, which I've definitely noticed, maybe you've noticed this, but sometimes when I like, like, doing a mission by myself in Helldivers, oh, uh, yeah. like, now I can't do that anymore. You can't really play by yourself. <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe you can play it on, like, one or two or three. I was trying to play it on Challenging at level four, which I thought was reasonable, but you just can't really, you can't do that anymore. So No, it's... Yeah. It's interesting because it feels like a whole different skill set that you have to learn and have to be able to do, right? To play, even on the old difficulty settings, like playing uh, solo. Right. And then they just made it impossible. And I was like, hey, can can I, can you not? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I don't have all my friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also saw something on Twitter that said uh, they would be changing extreme difficulty. So level six, uh, mm-hmm. extreme difficulty will now have super samples. Uh, oh wow! Instead of uh, level seven, so very cool. Yes, so those would be more attainable. Yes, very. I, cool. I do wonder if there was like a drop off because I know that me and this is just uh, anecdotal. I know a lot of my friends aren't playing right now, mm-hmm. and I think they're trying to be like, no, no, come back, come back, it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we successfully completed the last major order at, on was sat i want to say um mm-hmm. so that was good but yeah I, i've been i've been logging in periodically and seeing like the active players and it looks like it's been hovering around like seventy five thousand. so still people online but certainly not you know what it once was uh, where it was like almost hitting seven hundred thousand people on at once so yeah yeah, yeah. Um, um what have you been playing this past week uh, I have also been playing multiverses, um, oh, yeah. so I think that the the rifts modes that they that they have built into the game, I think like that's a great way to keep players coming back and logging in every day and collecting like daily rewards and whatnot. So I've been getting into that. I've I've noticed that the Iron Giant is missing uh, from the roster, uh, but I he was got ha- slid out because he has an uh an, like an unbreakable combo that you could just win from the gate with. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. <laughs> so I I did see that he 
uh, the next rift does have him uh, like on the advertisement. So I, I'm I'm guessing after Agent Smith, uh, he will be the next character uh, to to reemerge. But I, I've been I've been having fun with it. Uh, like I have to say, like it's almost it feels a little simpler than it did when it first came out. Like mm-hmm. it, it feels simpler than Smash Brothers. Not that Smash Brothers is a very complicated game. But, like, I feel like all of the characters, there's no, there are characters that are more difficult to play, but none of them are so ridiculously hard. You're like, I don't know how to fight as Arya Stark. I don't know how to fight uh, as Rick from Rick and Morty. Uh, No, it's like, you can figure them out. They're not, you know, they all do up this, down this, you know, whatever. So, um, so yeah, I've been having fun with that. And then I've been playing a lot of X Defiant. Oh, I, you have been. I have. I really like it, and it turns out that I'm pretty good at that game. So, <laughs> you know. That I, helps. That... I think I had a match. I went 48 and 20, and Damn. I was I was living high. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> so it was on the welcome playlist, so I was playing with noobs, but that's, you know, it's a new game. So how <laughs> new can you be? <laughs> so... Um, but, I was playing with uh, six-year-olds only. That was. No, no, that's that's still pretty good. I, that's that's the reason I'm playing multiverses. I'm like, oh, I feel pretty good at this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. And then um, I get stomped, and I'm like, I'm not playing this anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I played. Uh, I was I, I was playing multiverses last night on my portal, and I accidentally clicked like play PvP. And oh. I, I'd never played PvP. I'd just been playing the computer all this time. And um, I I was downloading something on my computer, and so it was messing with my Wi-Fi connection with my portal, and so I mm-hmm. disconnected halfway through the match. Oh and, no! And I still won the match, um, and I reconnect because <laughs> I was playing. I don't know, must have been a kid or something. Who, Possible, like, didn't, but... yeah, didn't they, know what they, they were doing. They do pair you with some bots in that game i think to get you started and then if you lose more than three times which has happened to me once or twice okay then right. you're just like why am i even playing just yeah it ha- maybe it was a bot because it was kind of ridiculous like i'm like <laughs> i shouldn't be kicking this much butt um all right uh but let's let's get into the summer game fests the all the announcements that came out we were talking about how xbox had a big showing uh, so let's kick it off with some big Xbox announcements, uh, and let's start it off with probably one of the, one of the biggest ones, which is Gears of War E Day. Uh, were you surprised to see another Gears of War game, given how many Gears of War games there have been, Phil? No, I was I was surprised to see not a sequel. I didn't think they would go E Day, mm-hmm. but I do think that this is the right move for okay. them. Because it was kind of getting a little monotonous, I feel like, in the most recent games of like, okay, we beat the bad guys, we beat the Scourge, or whatever they're called. Right. Oh, look, a new version of them. Or whatever. Uh, so seeing, like, when... Because I remember reading the original Gears of War, like, pamphlet, or, like, about the game, and one of the deals was, like, nobody survived more than five minutes uh, on a battlefield, with the exception of Marcus Phoenix. Like, he was one of the best soldiers. Uh, and so seeing that, making it more of like a horror game, mm-hmm. uh, is probably going to be a pretty interesting kick, uh, a version of this character to see, you know? Yeah. So like, you think it's really going to go back to its like roots of Gears of War 1, where it was more about being scary and less about being action oriented? I think so. And I feel like this game is going to be like, at the very end, you're going to get the freaking chainsaw gun. <laughs> Right. <laughs> that's that's what it's going to all lead to. Yes. Get back to that Lancer. Uh, what did, what did you think about this trailer? I mean, I thought it was a killer trailer. A very well done cinematic trailer. Very very well done. I love the remix of Mad World under it. I don't think I'll ever mm-hmm. get sick of that song. Um it's just, just a great song. Um so I I think doing E-Day is is really smart. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think there's, you know, some stuff that we haven't really explored there. I know that in Gears of War 5, like the first mission was an E-Day mission, like when it was all happening. So Mm -hmm. they've touched on E-Day in the Gears of War saga, uh, but they've never really gotten really into it. 
Um, so, but as excited as I am, and I, I have to say like Gears of War is probably my favorite Xbox franchise, like flat out mm-hmm. since I was a teenager. Um, but like, I personally would like to see the Gears of War, um, universe expand a little bit and mm-hmm. where I thought the misstep was with Gears of War four and five in like the new era gears of war is that they kind of just did what star wars did which is just like hey you know what we suffered through last time it's happening again the exact same thing and it's the exact same enemy and and like i feel like i get it you need to keep the battle going because you need justification of the gameplay and the the gears of war happening but i would like to see uh, an, an even bigger generation jump where it's like okay what happens when you know uh the gears of war planet i forgot the name of the planet right now but when that planet's cleared it's liberated and what happens when this universe they start going to other planets and they run into they run into the locusts on another planet and they realize oh my god they're not originally from it, here you're uh, something so you can get like do gears of war is it and, is it what? not earth in gears of war i think it starts with an s i think it's called like sarah or Saren oh, yeah. or something like that and so yeah. it's not it's not earth and that i think mm. that's how they get away with like justifying well uh the locusts have always been here underground or something mm. like that, but you know, this it gets this stuff involved with the story where you know the the humans created the locusts and all all that kind of stuff. But I just would like to see the universe as a whole move forward, move past what has already been established by other games. I love EA. Yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a good idea to try to get back into Gears of War's roots, but. I, I, I don't want there to be Gears of War E-Day 2, Gears of War E-Day yeah. 3. Like, do this as a one-off and then decide to move the universe forward or leave the game alone or leave the yeah. franchise alone. So, yeah. you know, I, honestly, I could see, like, going further back and doing, like, a group of Gears, like, but you're on, you're, like, in some subterranean tunnels, hollow, sarin, whatever theory, and you're, like... yeah. You're discovering the locust for the first time. Maybe only one of you makes it out or doesn't make it. Like right. something something very different, like you're saying, but kind of with an excuse to keep the same gameplay. Yeah. Um Yeah, no, I'm very happy Mad World made a reappearance because that first trailer for Gears of War One with Mad World, mm. uh <laughs> it's they know their roots. They know the trailer itself kind of has this very hopeless vibe for most of it until the very end. When Marcus gets his uh, uh, spoiler, gets a hand up on the locust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it just shows how hard the fight is, and I think if they can recapture that in the game, then you're on a good track. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So it looked look again great cinematic trailer. If you haven't watched it, go and check it out. But let's move on to the next cinematic trailer that uh, Xbox released, and that was Fable. Finally, we're getting more Fable out of yeah. the, you know, it's been so long. There's been such a up and down with Fable through through all of these years. Because I, I don't know if you've played the original Fable, Phil, but I mm-hmm. love the original Fable. Like, yeah. oh my God, what a what a good RPG. And like, I, I know that, you know, Fable 2 and Fable 3 kind of got a little bit off the rails for some people. Um, but I'm, I'm just happy to see that they're continuing the franchise and moving it forward. Uh, you said you played yeah. the original Fable, Phil. Did you play the other ones? I played Fable 1, Fable 2, Fable 3. Fable 2 is my favorite. Oh, okay. Uh, just because, like, of the dog, of all this, like, all the added things that they kind of cooked in there. I feel like that was the promise of the original Fable more realized. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and Fable 3 was, like, two games in one. Uh <laughs> It didn't do either of them great, but I still had a good time playing it. Uh, and then, of course, there was like the VR Fable game right. that I never played. Or no, uh, uh, it wasn't VR. It was uh, Connect Fable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and then Fable Legends, which do you remember that? I do not remember Fable Legends. It sounds familiar, but I do not know what that is. It only ever made it into like beta. It was like a four player game, five player game where four people played as heroes and one person played as like. Uh, a dungeon master is a, a, a isometric. No, a 
asymmetric uh, multiplayer game where like okay. you're throwing enemies at the group. Um, but then again, it got canceled before it ever made out of beta. So some people have played it. So Fable has this long history of like, hey, so I wasn't ever really planning on seeing this Fable game again after that last trailer we got. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but, but what did you think of the trailer? I mean, it's... It's very promising. Like, I think uh, they gave us some important, like, story hints in the trailer. I I feel like, uh, you know, they hinted like, okay, this is your mentor um, that's narrating this. And that we're seeing your custom character. uh, But the villain seems to be like your mentor's original student. And you Mm. seem to be like the second student or something like that. Um, so it looks really cool. There were there were a couple shots in the trailer that looked like gameplay, but mm-hmm. I don't. I uh, just because of Fable as a franchise has made a lot of promises and not lived up to those promises. And I think you know, like you said, like Fable Two was able to realize some of those promises. Fable 1 didn't really, but like I feel like Fable 1, you had the excuse of like, it's a new intellectual property. It's a new mm-hmm. game. You can't ask for a new, like the first iteration of a game to be perfect and to get everything mm-hmm. right. Um, and so like, I don't know if the gameplay that looked like gameplay was more like conceptual than fully realized. And so I'm going to have a little you know uh be be a little suspicious about that um but if that was gameplay that looks freaking phenomenal and i'm excited to be getting games that actually look like next gen games um you know made by the big companies who can afford to to make games look like that so um i'm excited and again like i think there's kind of been a um kind of an rpg and fantasy vacuum in the market and i think Mm -hmm. that's part of the reason why Baldur's gate 3 was able to succeed so much i mean obviously you had the huge DD market that it brought in uh but like i think just there hasn't been a lot of good fantasy games you know and that's yeah so we've been seeing like like dragon's dogma 2 was a was a good game wasn't perfect but it did really well because there's just not a lot to compete with right now Um, yeah there's a there's a a definite like lack of of that type of game we'll see again in even just in this uh showcase in our review of the showcase there was some more fantasy represented granted a very different kind but i think fable is in this very like a unique spot because i think the shot you're talking about if i'm getting it right mm-hmm. it's the protagonist walking towards like this frog monster or something like that there, yeah. there's like a shot that i was like that's mm-hmm. the right camera angle it's just low enough to make me think it's gameplay right um if they can stick to something like that and you know maybe now we're in the moment of, of the next gen console generation where the games really do start to look like crazy and that gap is just getting longer and longer with each console iteration right um but yeah, no, I'm I'm excited. Like Fables always had really fun combat, like engaging mixes of how to do your combat and your magic and like making it all flow really, really well as as well with like something that we don't see that often anymore, which is like a morality slider or that the way that like you would that would take an effect on how you look on the different like attributes about you. Um, if we can really tug on those strings and like investigate what that's going to be. This fable, I think, has the potential to be a very involved and very entertaining game. It does look pretty story forward, which I think can be a good thing. But yeah. uh, part of me, like, really hope for like a blank slate fable game, it's almost to the to with like the level of branching narratives as Baldur's Gate. I know that it's Microsoft behind the wheel, so it's probably not going to happen. But still, <laughs> I'm sure, just just excited to be back in that universe. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited that Microsoft's still running with it. Um, so I I could definitely go for more Fable. Um, all right, so let's talk about something a lot less exciting. Uh, <laughs> so kind of getting what? off of Xbox, <laughs> we'll come back to the Xbox showcase. Uh, but there was um, some Sony announcements, uh, and one of the main ones was Lego Horizon Adventures, and you are mm-hmm. hearing me correctly. Lego Horizon, as in Horizon Zero Dawn, as in Horizon Forbidden West, there is going to be a Lego Horizon 
game. Um, I have some complicated feelings about this. Um, so I'll, I'll just get into it for myself real quick. Like, look, it looks, it looks pretty. It looks like a fun, cute Lego game. And I know that there, I know that this game is not for me. So let me mm-hmm. just get that out of the way. Uh, this game is for kids and it's a way for a younger audience to engage, uh, you know, with the Horizon franchise. And that's cool and everything. So I can appreciate that. But for me as a Horizon fan, like this just strikes me as such a cash grab. Um, where it's just like, we need to make more kid-friendly games. And so we're going to take a game that is not kid-friendly and we're going to put that, put it in a Lego setting and do some licensing deal so we can make a game. And I really don't like that. And that doesn't resonate with me at all. And, uh, you know, I know people, Horizon is not as popular of a franchise as like God of War. But could you could you imagine if this was Lego God of War Adventures? Like I'd be so much more stoked. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would love you get it like Vamir's head would just be like one of the little bobble, like the little heads uh, hanging behind him. I this doesn't feel like a cash grab to you. Like, I mean oh, I don't know if it feels like a cash grab as much as it just feels like a mistake. You know? Yeah. Um, it's. I think that like they want kid friendly properties, right? And they're like, all right, how do we make Horizon? Like, I think they're overvaluing Horizon in their network because Horizon kind of always comes out and gets its lunch eaten by another game that comes well, out right after. It's come out the like exact. It's like a week apart from both of the Zelda games. So, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think what... the first one was Zelda. The second one was uh, maybe God of War Ragnarok or Elden Ring or both like I think it was I think it was Elden Ring and Zelda Elden Ring. Yeah, like Yes. Yeah. So what are you guys doing? So yeah. there I I think Sony is like, "All right, yeah, this is our big thing." And granted, it looks really fun. Um I love that like the style of Lego humor is is coming to other things, but it also like use Ratchet and Clank or use like Ratchet and Clank actually is perfect because they're building stuff all the time, right? Uh, and if we would have seen something new from that property at least, which would have been like, okay, well, this is exciting. Horizon, like we've just seen, not to mention they had Horizon one and two, the re-releases that are like, um, you know, the the game of the year editions. Then that right. VR game, right? And now this. And as much as I love Horizon, and I know you enjoy Horizon like as a game, I don't feel like it it supports this kind of. I don't think it's the right IP to build this off of. It's yeah, it's not quite a big enough franchise uh, to do this. This is not. It's not God of War, uh, mm-hmm. which is like Sony's like super ultra heavy hitter. They're not even. They're not on the level of like a Naughty Dog with The Last of Us. Um, you know, I think yeah, I think what they're doing is like they did not sell like what they wanted but they have this established franchise and trying to figure out how to make more money uh, because they did not meet their sales goals on the other games. So again, like, look, if there could be a nine year old out there who gets this game and it's their freaking game of the year. And I have not, there's no problem with that at all. It's just, this is not for me. Um, And being a big horizon fan, I'm kind of a little discouraged by it. So, so yeah, I, if anything, I hope it uh, it shows that Sony is they like Horizon, so hopefully we'll get more Horizon. You know. <laughs> yeah, but I I feel like at this point, like let's uh, hey Gorilla, can we make another Killzone game? Can we get back on that Killzone train? Like last Killzone I, game came out twenty twelve, I want to say. La- launch for the PS four, yeah. Yeah, so. You know, you could use a you could use a good shooter. You haven't had like a good first person shooter that's really like yours in a while. Mm. So I don't know if Gorilla's just sick of making those games or not. But all right, Phil, why don't you get into the next one on our list? Oh. We had a big video for this game. That's right. We got to see some gameplay for Assassin's Creed Shadows. Uh, I would say finally. But like the the <laughs> regular trailer was not released more than a month ago. Granted, that we've all been waiting for a Japanese Assassin's Creed game, so 
here we are. Um, I think it showed off kind of what makes it different from uh, uh, Ghost of Tsushima mm-hmm. and some of the other samurai games that we've got. In, in, a, in the very way that you pointed out that it could be different is showing off cities. Um, I think you like, pointed that out, good sir. So I, I'm giving this one to Paul. I feel like you said it. Before, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter. We, I, I think you brought it up, it. and then I was like, "That's a good idea, Phil. You're right." <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Um, but yeah, no that that looks great. Uh, the combat looks like larger than life in a way that Assassin's Creed isn't normally. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we saw a good amount of Yasuke fighting, and then uh, Naue. Uh, doing some of her stealth stuff and they both look bigger and more bombastic than most assassin's creed games so it seems like they're ditching some of the realism for a little bit more of an action focus um but yeah overall i was pretty excited to see it it looks beautiful what what were your thoughts on the trailer paul i thought overall i i really liked it uh there were a couple of things that i was a little mm, about but overall broad strokes i think it was a good showing uh i really liked the stealth gameplay i thought um with what is the 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 shinobi's name is, is, uh is it Nawe, i believe Nawe. uh but yeah. like when she's in the water like doing a crawl it's like that's something that i've been missing from assassin's creed for so long of like hey maybe you should look at games like metal gear solid like when you're sneaking around because you know not sneaking in the the mythology trilogy has really been just like well you can crouch and that's it <laughs> like yeah <laughs> and so and so like seeing her like crawl in the water and then using like uh, a, a, a straw a mm-hmm. straw to like breathe underwater i was like that's what i'm freaking talking about so i was i was really impressed by that moment and then going uh, back to yasuke um or is that how you pronounce his name as well i think yas yasuke or yasuke i don't yasuke. know I'm... well the the samurai uh protagonist i think there were some things that were really cool. I like seeing him like charge through the buildings and you're seeing like, okay, this is a guy who leads with brute force and everything like that. It, they did some things that were able to differentiate it from ghost of Tsushima. Um, the one kind of drawback I had with this combat, and this is again, back to like the Assassin's Creed mythology trilogy is where you had like your, your hot key commands where it's like now i'm going to do super ground pound attack and it goes and it's just like okay well that's not in the realm of reality but all right um but you know ghost of tsushima has similar things to that as well um so i i do feel like the yeah i guess that there's like a sequence where he's fighting in a like a market and he slams the ground you see just like a bunch of energy come off of it yeah it really makes it kind of feel cinematic but also like i guess similar to the mythology uh, games they they also had some like you know they had the sparta kick or whatever right um this i don't know if they keep the sort of like low uh low camera angle graphics over the shoulder thing they can make it feel really cinematic and interesting mm-hmm. if it very quickly becomes just like kind of if they, if they have too much of that like they did in the last games it just yeah. becomes kind of a wash and boring you know yeah and so that's where i'm at and i know that like that's a personal preference i know people who are really into the the new assassin's creed um you know like combat system when it originally pivoted in um origins assassin's creed origins in egypt um so i know people like really prefer that um but for me an assassin's game should be primarily about sneaking uh and so that's what gets me excited about it um Mm. But but yeah, overall, I thought it was a good showing. And and for me, it made me very curious. It, the game is coming out this year. Um, so it made me it made me very curious. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll pick this up. And I didn't think I yeah. was going to. So maybe 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 you've changed my mind there. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving right along. Paul, would you like to introduce our next game on yes. the list? Yes, I would. So Dragon Age Veil Guard. Uh, we finally got to see some gameplay from it uh, today, right before we, well, a couple hours before we started recording. And uh, yesterday, uh, when the Games Fest was still going on, technically, uh, we got a trailer, like a cinematic trailer for it. And honestly, mm. I hated that trailer. 
I thought that that trailer, I was like, is EA about to release Dragon Age as a live service game? Like that's because it because it felt like an Overwatch trailer or like Sony with what they did with Concord of yeah. like, ah, oh, it's this is the characters, the cast, and this guy's mm. got this ability. <laughs> and I was like, not about it at all. Mm. So hated the trailer. Um, but once I saw the gameplay and they really showed us like the introduction of the game, essentially skipped a couple moments for time. Um, mm. But I was actually reasonably impressed. I thought that the graphics looked good. Um, you know, usually with a lot of these game demos, you get really shoddy like frame rates and stuff like that. So I, I thought the performance, the the art direction, I think worked in the game as opposed to in the cutscenes um, mm-hmm. or in the trailer. Uh, and then the the only thing I'm a little finicky about is I don't know about the combat. It's mm-hmm. the combat strikes me as is this too loosey goosey um am i actually is the combat going to feel engaging and visceral when it comes right down to it um but i will say i had that same thought when i was watching combat in hogwarts legacy Mm. and hogwarts legacy happily like made me fall in love with the combat in that game so oh, yeah. I feel like with this new Dragon Age is just one of those things where you just got to if, like, if they release a demo or something like that, where you just got to feel the combat out a little bit. Um, because I know like they have been doing this progression in gameplay, you know, starting from Dragon Age Origins, where it was very slow and not exactly turn based, but kind of turn based. Yeah. And, and then, you know, Dragon Age 2 you know it was more more, of an arpg yeah and then inquisition you know and now we're finally getting to the point of like okay they're kind of embracing what final fantasy is doing which is just like you are more actively participating uh in the combat um and like like you said jrpg um so i'm excited for it i am also excited that they showed a rogue um Mm. because i feel in dragon age that rogues are a freaking nightmare to play as uh, because <laughs> the gameplay does not lend itself towards sneaking around. And yeah. they, they showed here a very DPS uh, fast rogue who did not have to rely on sneaky tactics and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So what about you? What were your thoughts with Veilguard? I, I feel what you're saying about the combat that I, I like what I'm seeing, but if it doesn't feel like tight, if, if the hit boxes aren't exactly right, you know, um, all of that dodging will just kind of be for show and not actually have a purpose. I didn't feel like there was too many moments that I saw like, okay, this guy dodged and that just created a window and now he's hit. Right. Um, it, if, if they can keep it like it looked and make it feel very like frenetic and fun, um, I'm, I'm all into it. I will say though, because I didn't think about the trailer as like uh, a lot like games as a service and like oh you can get this character or like you know the youtube ads you see where it's like right. unlock whatever an idle journey yeah <laughs> um i thought of it as almost like uh like kind of like a oceans 11 thing where like all right we're getting together the the, yeah. the crew to do this robbery um and it, with that aspect i very much enjoyed it i feel like they were kind of going for uh, the tongue-in-cheek fantasy of the Dungeons and Dragons movie that came out a few years ago, mm-hmm. um, and if they can keep up that particular uh, cadence, like I think I would greatly enjoy at least to have some characters that represented that kind of a fantasy adventure. Sure. Um, I, you know, depending on who you pick in your team, hopefully you could change the course of it. But it's cool to see dragons are going to be coming back because I love their dragon designs. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, wouldn't yes. be a Dragon Age game without it. Absolutely. Uh, and I have to say, I think I'm going to try playing a magic user. Ever since Inquisition, I've been like all about magic users in the game. I feel like they make it really cool and not boring immediately to play as a magic user. So right. uh, excited for this one. And especially the, that it's coming out this year, uh, allegedly. Yes. Big surprise. Huge. I yeah. did not. I thought it was going to be 2025. Um, like, But yeah, this year. Very impressive. I'm, I, I hope the combat is there, like we mentioned. Mm. But yeah, very exciting. I, I think I think they're they're like choking up on the bat and sitting back on the pitch for this one because it's been in development for so long, and EA can't 
with this game i feel like yeah. without some substantial cost that's a good point that's a very good yeah. point so yeah they need it they need a hitter that isn't uh uh a soccer game <laughs> so yeah, yeah. or a foot, football game <laughs> um, football Yes. All right. So pressing right along. This is kind of a short, quick announcement, but Civilization Seven uh, was announced. Um, they did not show us any kind of gameplay for the game. It was just a teaser trailer, and we got a title that said Civilization Seven. Um, so it. You know, hey guys, I, we're still doing it. We're still <laughs> doing it. You know, after all these DLCs, we're gonna make yeah. another game where the DLCs <laughs> won't transfer. So, um, oh. you know, I'm a big Civ lover. Um, so I will probably inevitably pick this up. Uh, but yeah, without them actually explaining it, anything other than "Hey, we're making Civilization Seven, Like, I don't really have a lot to say about this. Um, uh, or, have you played Civ Six, Phil? I I did. I think I played it for. I got it close after it came out. Played all night one time. Played like a couple of campaigns and then didn't touch it again. So that's my every Civ game. I do that. I like do a long <laughs> night and then I never go never back to again. it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Uh, do you since, since you have some experience with Civilization? Are there any things particularly that you would like to see? uh like change in civilization seven um granted this is my memory of the last one i would love it if uh like when you're playing against the pc if the turns happen at the same time so you're not just sitting there waiting for the to process <laughs> i completely a hundred percent agree oh my god yeah i don't know why they do that yeah it's so killer. It's like, this is not a board game. I'm not waiting for my friend. Just, like, do the thing you're going to do. Yeah. While I'm thinking about the thing that I'm going to do, you just don't wait on me to press the button. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. I think that would be great. I think also um, Civilization Six kind of took a, a cartoony turn in its art style uh, from Civilization Five, where it felt more like you know, old historical maps and civilization six is like, ah, it's all cartoony. It kind of reminded me of like age of empires online and stuff. And, uh, so I would like to see a return to more of like that old historical feel. And then like, I think that the art style should change with the age that you're in, as opposed to being the same art style the entire time. I would love to see that, uh, change visually. Um, and then, yeah, I think just streamlining lining some things. But I don't know. I, I feel like whenever they come out with a new Civilization game, it's kind of like they just throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and like, we'll see what sticks. And, you know, because we have the base formula is solved. We know what to do with the base formula here. So, so yeah, yeah, just just, you know, take more ch take chances with them. I do love in Civ games that you can have like a library or a library from like the uh, the Dark Ages. And then, like we also have a battleship. Yeah, these two things both exist in our city. <laughs> we don't read much, but we blow things up. <laughs> and I was playing as America. Wow, of course you were. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, any, anything else on Civ Seven? You think? No, we got enough. Uh, we got enough announcements to get through. I say we just move on to Harry Potter Quidditch Champions, the game oh, we've yeah. all been waiting for. <laughs> Oh I'm God. not going to lie. I'm so stoked on this game. I played what? the hell out of the EA Quidditch game what are you uh, talking way about? back in the day. <laughs> you, did? you did? Yeah, yeah. I used to listen to Switchfoot and play uh, EA's Quidditch, champion, uh, Quidditch World Champions, I believe. That sounds right. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a lot of fun. Like It was, it was a sports game. Uh, or made with all like the reality of a sports game or like the the sort of gameplay contextual mix of a sports game but it was about quidditch so you had like you'd fly around you had a dodge move when you had the uh not the quaffle yeah it's the quaffle um and you would try and like throw it through the the different rings at the end there <laughs> i'm gonna play this game i'm gonna play this game <laughs> i've missed quidditch you miss Quidditch. Yeah. Oh man. All right. So, so you, were you one of those people who was really bummed when Hogwarts Legacy was like, "There's no Quidditch in the game"? Uh, I would have been if I like. I was like, "Oh, they're just going to come out with another game or DLC," and I would kind of rather Quidditch be its own thing than just a kind of cute addition in another. Because I feel like it wouldn't have been fully fleshed out. 
Yes, I um, agree. There was already so much going on in that game. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I'll be honest. Obviously, I am not as excited about this as you are. <laughs> um, I feel that Quidditch is a very flawed game that was not really thought out very well. Um, so, like, the idea that you have to be up by 150 points or actually 160 points for the snitch to not matter um, yeah. kind of seems infuriating as, as a game. <laughs> like, like what is the point of the other positions um, mm. for me? Uh, but I mean, I know that a lot of people are freaking Quidditch fans. I know that there are real life like LARPer Quidditch players out there. So, mm -hmm. and I know that there's a huge community that was really upset when there was no Quidditch in Hogwarts Legacy. So mm -hmm. here's your Quidditch game. Here you go. I, I hope it's good for you. <laughs> Is listen, this... Hey, listen, you can knock the entire other team out if you got a really good beater. You just take them all off the board, score, score 200 points. What a points. name for a position, a beater. Yeah, just... You just have a little bat and you hit a ball at other people. You, yep. There's no rule against hitting people with a little bat. No one, just nobody does it. I see. I see. <laughs> God, this should be interesting. Um, <laughs> do we know? I, I didn't really see many details about this game. Do you know if it's like a free to play game or anything like that? Or So, because I played a. Uh, uh, Hogwarts Legacy, I think I had some emails like, hey, we're doing, we want to do a Quidditch game. Would you be interested in being in like the beta for that if we do it? Mm. It seems like it's going to be free to play. Um, yeah, that's what it looks like I'm, to me. Yeah, and I that's I feel like the best case scenario. So people can get in if the game is there, just play that. And like, sure, if you want to buy skins of certain characters, great. But yeah. Okay. Actually, cool. a Voldemort Quidditch skin would be very cool <laughs> and horrifying. <laughs> I would pay for that. Um, oh, but yeah. That's my feelings on Harry Potter Quidditch Champions. All right, all right. Well, let's, strangely let's, positive. Strangely positive. I like it. All right, uh, let's press on. So we got back to the Xbox showcase, another heavy hitter for them. Doom the Dark Ages, uh, probably the game I'm most excited about coming out of Summer Games Fest. I think it looks so badass. Um, I am a big Doom fan, especially of the newer games. Uh, you know, Doom 2016 and then Doom Eternal that came out in 2020. Um, so I'm excited. I love that they're going kind of similar with Gears of War. They're going back in time a little bit. Uh, and it just it just looks great. And I just have such faith that the game will be good. What mm -hmm. I do hope they do, separate for aside from Doom, Doom Eternal, is just I really didn't like their... Um, lack of multiplayer support for doom eternal and so with yeah doom the dark ages please release with some basic multiplayer because they really just had one multiplayer mode for doom eternal and i think it was like a a three-person mode where it was like 2v1 one person played a monster two people yeah. played uh you know marines and that that it was quirky and it was fun but it was not something that i was going to go back and play you know, more than a couple times personally. Yeah. Um, so I hope that there's more um, multiplayer focus here, uh, but I love the campaign, you know, by itself as well. Uh, what are your thoughts? My biggest wish for uh, Doom the Dark Ages is that they have two audio tracks that you can play. One of them being the metal track, that's like the hardcore metal track, mm -hmm. and the other track being the same exact notes, same exact music, just played on like lutes, hurdy-gurdies, little drums flutes pipes like just totally in uh in era style metal that's yeah it. <laughs> that would be awesome you know that would be a great like old school game unlockable like you beat the game you know you get big head mode you get mm -hmm. you know and then that that music mode that comes with it that would be awesome yeah uh, right. but other than that excited for it that's it. Yeah, not, not much else to say other than it's... these these Doom guys seem to have it. Yeah, they, they seem to it. know what they're doing. So I'm not gonna <laughs> throw in my critique. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, all right, moving right along. Then uh, we got some Phantom Blade. We actually got some Phantom Blade gameplay. Uh, so that was good to see because the thing uh, for people who have seen Phantom Blade before. 
uh, you know, where it's like this crazy sword parrying. Oh my God, we're doing all this crazy stuff. And it kind of looked like, how are you actually able to do that gameplay wise? Because everything's happening way too fast. And as I suspected, a lot of those things are quick time events uh, that you will not actually be responding to. So that kind of took my excitement out of the game you know i was kind of hoping hoping that there might be you know obviously kind of has to be a quick time event but but like something that's this sounds kind of out there but kind of like a guitar hero of sword Mm -hmm. fighting where you're like you have to you know hit the right you know timing or stuff like that but it's more like well if you hit this button he blocks the next six six attacks and if you hit this other button then he does this attack and he jumps for and so so much of it feels like it's done for you and not that it doesn't look cool but it just doesn't make me feel like i'm in actual control of what's happening um Mm. so i was a little discouraged by this gameplay trailer still looks interesting um but aside from that the aesthetic is not really my thing either Mm. kind of more of like a blood born or a Sekiro aesthetic um, yeah how are you what are your thoughts on Phantom Blade um it looks I, I like the aesthetic a lot as a sort of like grim um like old or medieval Japanese uh aesthetic yeah um kind of medieval grunge yeah yeah very much so uh, and I think like some of the combat stuff looks cool it does look like there are certain in some instances, moves you pull off, almost like putting in a combo uh, <laughs> in a fighting game. But yeah, yeah, I, I'm really skeptical. It does seem a little bit like uh, Metal Gear Revengeance. You ever, you ever played that? Um, are you talking about like uh, the Metal Gear oh. with uh, what's his face? Raiden. Raid, yeah, Raiden. Yeah, yeah. Is Revengeance a different one? That's that's the one. Oh, that's, that's the, the one. one. Yes, yes, yes. Um, granted, that one had the cool like you could angle your blade and like cut through stuff. Yes. Like you could freeze time and like dice yeah. things up. Super cut cool. watermelons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that if, if this game uh, kind of can capture that feeling again, we haven't had anything like that that was so like high adrenaline. I think there's um, not maybe it's not my cup of tea, but I think a lot of gamers miss that like ridiculous anime style like over the, the over yeah, the topness yeah yeah yeah, yeah i could see um, that i think there's a market out there for it um yeah so. japan's having a great year like a great couple of years in terms of like games set in japan and like uh so yeah excited to see that uh aspect of it but other than that you know i'll probably play it I, for me this is a when it's on sale for 30 dollars yes that's phil's zone <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. same same that's a that's for me maybe a little bit less <laughs> maybe, <Yeah. laughs> maybe a couple years steam sale um so yeah but uh let's let's press on since we're god we're already running out of time already we still got games to talk about so uh yeah. star wars outlaws was the big headliner for ubisoft's ubisoft forward um and so we got a lot of gameplay we got some more explanations um of the game and so we saw a lot more of it let's uh, start with you phil uh did you get a chance to watch all the the new gameplay and new systems that uh, they explained at the conference yeah i did the trailer was interesting because it did seem like there was a lot of canned moments mm-hmm. um but at the same time it looks like uncharted star wars in an open world so i'm into that yeah, that I guess that's my big, like I'm very trepidatious about this game. I want it to be good. If it is the things that it says it is, I'm excited about it. The the sort of space combat seemed pretty cool. Yeah. Um the the motorbike or the jet bike seems cool and I like the aspect of going and finding people to teach you specific skills or um I I, I don't is it that or are you putting together a team? I guess I wasn't super clear on it. Yeah, they were a little little fuzzy with those details. Yeah. So it kind of sounded like you're chasing these specialists and they're going to teach you how to do things. And mm. so maybe some of them will join your team. But it doesn't really strike me as a team builder, like an RPG team builder game. Uh, yeah. Like Dragon Age or something like that or Mass Effect. A Bioware hey. game, I should just say. <laughs> I know specifically in the last trailer, or in like one of its big trailers, it was like, meet the team 
and it was like there's there's that one robot on our team and like well, more people will be revealed later so i feel mm-hmm. like there's probably going to be some crew assembly and it's most likely going to pick from those characters but yeah. i do like this uh, sort of mission structure of hey go learn a new skill and here is a whole quest that you do to get to that new skill. Ghost right. of Tsushima does this, and I've, I've been playing it a lot recently. Mm-hmm. And it's really, really fun to be like, okay, I get to do these quests to get a specific reward. Um, that will change how I play the game later. So very into that. But outside of it, still trepidatious. Where, where are you at, Paul? I, I kind of feel pretty similarly to how you do. I will say the latest reveal of information and trailers with this, it did change. It moved the dial a little bit for me because now I want the game to be good. I don't want to see the game fail. And I know that it's getting a lot of backlash um, for how expensive it is. And I actually, you know, we don't really have enough time to go into it this episode. But something that came out recently is that the pricing on those games may not be just Ubisoft's fault in that Disney is being very pricey with the Star Wars license. And mm-hmm. it came out recently that electric, uh, that EA wanted to actually do Battlefront 3, uh, but they could not get around Disney's licensing fees. Uh, and they didn't think that it would be profitable enough um, because of the licensing fees. So I think that there is an element that, you know, we want to be mad at Ubisoft. And I'm sure, you know, they're getting greedy because they've showed their greed with like Skull and Bones and games like that. But Disney is a contributing factor to the game's price. Uh, But uh, to get back to just the game itself, like it looks very uncharted. Mm -hmm. I don't like what they said at the top of the trailer. It's like, this is the first open world Star Wars game. And I was like, no, it's not. No, it's not not even (laughs) close. Not even close, Ubisoft. Are you kidding me right now? Knights of the Old Republic is not an open world Star Wars Wars game. The game came out 20 years ago. And Knights 2. We just got uh, Jedi Jedi Survivor. Survivor. That was was an open world world game. What are we talking about? You could make the argument that those spaces are, like, in both those games, the spaces are more small and contained. For sure. Of course, but they're contained for the... I mean, I would Purpose say not play. with yeah. with Jedi Survivor. Like it was a pretty, it was a pretty big game. Like you see oh, yeah. every spot in that game is pretty big, and mm-hmm. like I think what they showed in this game during this trailer is like, hey, we have these big locations that you can go explore, but this isn't No Man's Sky. This isn't Starfield. Yeah. It's like you can go to Tatooine and you can go to Moss Eisley. That's where mm-hmm. you can go in Tatooine. <laughs> that is the extent of it. And so like there you could argue that that is a confined space just like the other games are confined spaces. So Hey, I'm gonna go try and find Uncle Owen and Aunt Bruce Graves or their skeletons <laughs> or whatever's there. <laughs> Yes. And if they're not, we're suing. Um, yes. So, um, but I'm still, my biggest trepidation is, is the gameplay again. It just doesn't feel, it just doesn't look solid. It looks even it's shakier than, uh, than like uh, the, the freaking Dragon Age game that we were talking about earlier. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, it feels very loosey goosey. The gunplay kind of feels like an afterthought to me it's like it's i like that you're able to like use your little pet guy to 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 do things that's cool and everything but it just i'm uh, just a little concerned that they're trying to get the entire star wars market in this game (laughs) and it's like you're not really deciding is this for a child is this for a teenager or is this for an adult gamer that's now a viable market now um and so i feel like they're trying to get everybody um so i don't know i want the game to be good but just something about it is not lining up for me and i can't quite put my finger on it it does feel like they're checking box like the fact there's space combat in there feels like a, a box checked yeah um i it i guess for me it looked like uncharted by with the systems uh, of assassin's creed like specifically Mm -hmm. uh the the mythology trilogy yeah um if that is the case i'll be a bit bummed but they they're kind of they're also for me checking some boxes of things that i like like hey cool vehicle that land speeder yeah Uh, cool animal companion for star wars yeah sure it's true um so again as i've as i've cautioned everybody before get the ubisoft 
uh, subscription for that month. Yeah. Play Star Wars, play Assassin's Creed, and when you're done with it, don't pay eighty dollars for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, yeah. Any other feelings about Star Wars Outlaws? Um, I mean, like, just off of what you said, like, I do, they kind of implied that your speeder is going to be like this upgradable, customizable thing. I really liked that. Um, you know, it just, there's something, I guess there's something about it that feels a little on the rails. Uh, but when they're talking to me about it, they're kind of presenting it in this way, like, oh, you have all these choices and there's something about like how the game feels that I don't feel like I'm actually going to have a ton of choices. Um, it's it's kind of like I'm kind of getting a similar feeling to like when uh, when Rockstar is ready to release a Grand Theft Auto or a Red Dead Redemption, they do mm-hmm. these beautiful like this is what the multiplayer is going to be, and you can do mm-hmm. all these things that that are going to be amazing and we're going to walk you through all the systems and they have this amazing trailer and then when it actually releases you're like oh like i could do all of those things if i get all of my friends together and organize them exactly to rehearse this thing and then do this thing exactly how i planned it as opposed Mm -hmm. to what the game is letting me do and so yeah, I again, I, they've changed my mind and like I want the game to be successful. I'm going to be watching very closely uh, because if, if it straight up is like Star Wars Uncharted with some thrown in RPG elements, I'll be all on board. Uh, yeah, but I'm still a little hesitant right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right. Agreed, let's, agreed. let's get th- uh, to through these last two because we got to yeah. wrap it up. We got to wrap it up. Well, the next one is a game that I saw the trailer for. And I brought to the list specifically because uh, it looks so damn pretty and interesting. It's called Mixtape, and it is a game about uh, a childhood or young adulthood uh, you're playing as a teenager that takes place in the 80s. It, um, I can't remember the, the other game that this team has made. Uh, I think it's like an Artful Escape. But I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a game that's like driven by music of the 80s. And sort of like the teen experience, so you like make these friends. It, it could be a point and click adventure. It could be something along the lines of, um, uh, what was what's the game about two dudes escaping from prison? Uh, uh, no, no way out or uh, a, way out. A way out. A way, a way out. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's something along that. It's like sort of on rail scenes that you just experience. Either way, it looks absolutely gorgeous. It kind of has like this Spider Verse meets uh what was that game that clan animation looking game that we talked about not too long ago oh Harold Hall- yeah Harold Harold Halibut. Halibut yeah yeah um either way I think it'll just be like a really cool experience and it's got a lot of licensed songs from the 80s with which your character like just you know experiences their life about mm-hmm. uh but there's not too much to go on with it, so that's that's just all I got from the trailer. Yeah, um, but you know, always important to point out some indie games. We've been talking, you know, pretty much exclusively the big companies uh, that have come out with their big games, just because we don't have all the time in the world uh, for the podcast. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think the art style looked incredible. I like that it was a different vibe. I love the music inspiration. Um, it'll probably be a pretty on rails experience. Um, but like if you're going for that and you're committing to that, let's, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. all aboard. So, uh, and this is, and that's going to be coming. Was that at the Xbox showcase that they announced? That, that was at the Xbox showcase. And I believe that that's coming. Um, I, I don't know if they put a release date for it. So, okay. All right. Well, yeah. coming soon. Mixed tape. <laughs> All right, last game on our list. We got Black Myth Wukong. Uh, Black Myth has been a game that I've seen like gameplay for, like early gameplay for, early trailers for, for many years now. And to me, it was like, okay, this is like a Dark Souls game, but I really like the aesthetic here. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, we're finally, finally got a release date. It's finally coming. Uh, this fall, uh, I believe it was unfortunately delayed on Xbox, but it will be releasing normally for PC and PlayStation 5. Um, I think the art style here in this game looks incredible. The monster's design looks absolutely incredible. And I do kind of like the idea 
of playing kind of a Dark Souls-ish type game, but you have a set character whose journey yeah. it is. And I think that allows that game type um, to have a more fluid narrative that isn't this loosey-goosey, well, we're going to leave, you know, uh, some information in some page in this dungeon. And if you happen to read it, you can derive some story from that. Uh, <laughs> you know, So, like, I like that there, this is a set character. This is a set myth that they're kind of loosely basing this on. And so I'm, I'm really curious if this can be like the first Dark Souls-esque game i know some people are sensitive to you know comparing games to dark souls uh but if it can be that souls like a souls like (laughs) you know uh but if it can have like a good narrative that runs through uh the game so and it had a tremendous cinematic trailer very beautiful if you haven't watched the cinematic trailer for black myth uh that just came out this weekend go watch it it is it is gorgeous it's it's definitely like uh a very pretty game and it feels like um it feels like a mix of dark souls and it's, they're all from software games dark right. souls bloodborne and uh, sekiro <laughs> but maybe, maybe some by, monster hunter in there yeah i don't know maybe a bit i'll take that yeah, but yeah. It, it looks uh like all of it's been done in unreal engine 5 which is kind of like it's weird how that's both exciting and like kind of by the wayside because we have this really great new technology that is making these gorgeous games and making them a lot easier and quicker to make but it seems like the team really like put themselves through the ringer to make this look gorgeous it almost every frame that i've seen from every trailer um i do like the fact that you're playing as this mythical um what is his name the monkey god character um, i don't i don't know his name off the top yeah. of my head but so you're you're playing as like a mythical character fighting against other mythical characters. So you're not just an insignificant like uh, what is desecrated or whatever they are a in all the Dark Souls game. <laughs> yeah, a soulless. <laughs> you're not some dark soul. Uh, <laughs> y- you are a person with like a really cool set of abilities, and it kind of makes sense as to like why you would be here. Um, yeah, really excited about it. I've kind of like almost set this game outside of my brain because I've been bracing for the fact that it might not exist. <laughs> uh, it is it is from a new Chinese developer uh, and the trailers have just looked so incredibly good that I think everybody's been like, oh, well, this doesn't seem all that real. Right. Um, I do think that this was going to live up to the hype. Uh, and I'm not sure people have to go hands-on with it at Summer Games Fest. I sure hope so because the release is soon. Um so I'll have, to, I'll have to do a little bit more digging and report back, but I'm very excited. Very right excited. And is, is this one? I don't think it's going to be on Game Pass. Um, no, especially with the Xbox delay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so, yeah. PlayStation, that's that's where we're playing, buddy. <laughs> Get yep. ready. <laughs> Hopefully it's optimized. Um, <laughs> all right. So before we wrap up today, uh, just given everything that's happened over the last like four days, I want to say maybe even five. Uh, uh, I think we want to just talk about what was your uh, we'll start with you, Phil. What was your yeah. highlight game? And then what company, like obviously has to be one of the companies with a bigger showcase, uh, but what company do you feel like had the best showing uh, for the Summer Games Fest? Um, well, my biggest moment, I'm not going to lie, and this, this is a weird answer. Fable was my biggest moment. Very excited to see that coming back. Yeah, love those games, and I love that they're going to do something hopefully interesting and that they're putting a lot of time into it. Um, and for me, it's gotta be Xbox. They, man, it's tough because Xbox has really, um, tanked themselves in every conceivable metric by doing all these firings, by making these buying studios and then making them make really bad games. Yep. (laughs) Um, so that is all hurt. That said, the stuff that they showed off, I feel like they did exactly what they needed to just stay in the arena, Mm -hmm. uh, and still be shown some favor like they pulled out all the stops i showed us a new gears new fable um uh that i think that's where we got our first bit of the new uh the, we got uh, a starfield uh, update Age. we got a starfield update thank <laughs> god uh they 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 showed us more indiana jones like all yes. of these things that they've had brewing and cooking for a while so uh yeah for me xbox really came through 
PlayStation's on a down year. They're slow. Mm -hmm. uh, Nintendo is going to do a direct, I'm sure, eventually at the Treehouse and show us the next Pokemon soon. But outside of that, they were silent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So th those are my two. Fable and largely the Xbox Showcase was, I All think, right. the best showcase. What do you got? I mean, I think I think those are excellent picks. Uh, if you didn't say Xbox, I probably would have said Xbox myself. Uh, but for variety's sake, uh, I'll say Ubisoft. Um, I think they, for me, they were successful in that I am always so freaking pessimistic when Ubisoft does a press, a, a conference, uh, mm -hmm. because I just expect to be disappointed at every turn and like going through Ubisoft's announcements, it's like, okay, Star Wars outlaws. They did a deep dive. They made me by the end of it. I had a more positive outlook about Star Wars outlaws, Assassin's Creed shadows. You know, they did a deep dive at the end of it. I had a more positive outlook about Assassin's Creed X Defiant, as I brought up um, earlier that I've been playing a lot this week. They've got a new update coming for that. Uh, you know, adding um, the, you know, or not Counter-Strike, but uh, the Rainbow Six teams are going to be added to X Defiant. And then, like, I think you've got a lot of little announcements for Ubisoft that were actually pretty good. Your game, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, is getting a DLC. Or if you, I don't know if you already have the Seasons Pass, so that's going to be coming out. Um, mm -hmm. Prince of, there was a Prince of Persia new game update, as well as them announcing uh, a new Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, uh, which is the mm -hmm. classic Prince of Persia that I, you know, played when I was young. So that's exciting. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, and then there's just a lot of continued support for games. Um, you know, Skull and Bones, uh, they had some stuff on. And what I'm hoping is happening with Skull and Bones for them is that they are trending. They're going to get Skull and Bones to a place where it is a free-to-play game um, mm -hmm. to get people online. And then they just do some sort of subscription where they just do, like, seasonal stuff. And you can buy into the season uh, and whatnot. But they are continuing to support it, even though it had a horrible release. So I am, <laughs> I am hopeful about that. Uh, and then as far as uh, an individual standout... For me, I'm going to say Dragon Age Veilguard uh, because I had really low expectations for it. Uh, and I think like seeing that trailer yesterday, uh, the cinematic trailer, like my expectations even went lower. And so by the time I saw gameplay today, I was like, oh, OK, this is an actual it's an it's a real game. Okay, it's a real, it's a real game. game. <laughs> and I remember getting really into Dragon Age Inquisition. So, again, does the game look perfect immediately right now? No. But I'm I'm hopeful about it. It's been in the oven for a long time. And the fact that it's coming out this year is very exciting. And that we can actually, like, get our hands on it this year and talk about it on the podcast. So, um I I do feel like largely there's a sense that like last year was a huge year for video games, right? Like yeah. big crazy year. This year is a little bit slower, but this year is also allowing some of the uh, who used to be big dogs that are now underdogs to shine be between Ubisoft and Xbox specifically. Yeah. Um, I didn't get to catch the entirety of the Ubisoft uh, showcase. How much just dance did they show? Uh, they had one section uh, about Just Dance. It, it, I think it's Just Dance VR. Uh, that oh, it, okay. it's coming to the Meta Quest, the Meta Quest Three, and mm -hmm. so which I was like, yeah, fine. What? There's always Just That's... Dance, but I didn't see any rabbits. Uh, okay. so, so that was good. And then you know you had the two Prince of Persia announcements. The Division Two people are, that are into Division Two, uh, they're doing mm -hmm. like a free event. Anybody can play it. And they're doing, I think, a free DLC or something like that uh, to try to Interesting. reignite it. They also showed off a new version of Rocksmith, if you're into learning how Ooh. to play instruments. So, yeah, they had a lot of, like, good little things. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just kind of a bunch of appetizers that I was very, very into. So, uh, one, one last thing on Ubisoft's back. This is going to be three different Prince of Persia games mm -hmm. that are all separate. But all the same IP. Yes. We have the Prince of Persia game that uh, came out earlier this year. Mm -hmm. Prince of Persia Rogue Prince, or Rogue Prince of Persia. It's a roguelike. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and then this one will probably return to like the early 2000s Prince of Persia. Yeah. It's cool. Uh, I'm in. <laughs> it's, yeah, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, Mask of Darkness. 
And then, yeah, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, which we don't really know what that looks like at all because they just announced it. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, that's where I really got into Prince of Persia. I think Prince yeah. of, Sands of Time, Prince of Persia really established a lot of modern platforming in games that people have kind yeah. of forgot that it came from that franchise. So, uh-huh. so yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. uh, but with that... What a week. Yeah, what a week indeed. <laughs> we have have had so much to talk about and we'll probably take uh next week to talk about even more of the stuff that we weren't able to get into uh might have a little bit of a schedule change because i got some stuff going on uh next week but i'm excited to to get back into it when we do and as always phil thank you for joining me on the the ggg podcast always fun to do e3 summer games fest announcements when we are so amped about games and things happening it just it feels like we've been in the desert for a long time searching for a sip of water and jeff keely uh came in on a helicopter rope and just absolutely sprayed us with a super soaker full of some interesting information yes (laughs) (laughs) and he's gonna do it again for the game awards at the end of the year like he always does he's on top of it He's on top of it. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, uh, if you enjoyed this episode of the GGG podcast, please make sure to like and subscribe uh, the video version over on YouTube, which you can find at Golden Glazed Gaming. Or if you're on listening to the audio version only on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please give us a five star review or a follow or whatever you would like to do. Uh, any kind of interaction. Uh, and we would uh, really appreciate that. So until next week. Uh, We will see you later, and happy summer games. Peace.